Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting the new Korn Berserker miniatures for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. And we're going to be painting them in their classic World Eaters colour scheme for 40k, which is of course that nice red and also that brass trim. Now we're going to be covering lots of techniques that are really useful for all kinds of Chaos Space Marines in this video, and indeed lots of other Chaos miniatures for other games too, such as Age of Sigmar. So if you're a follower of the Dark Gods, this is a video you definitely want to watch. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you at the desk. When it comes to painting Corn Berserkers, we can approach them in the same sort of way that works really well for other Chaos Space Marines and indeed lots of Chaos Troops whenever you have that trim present. And as you can see on these models, there's a lot of trim on every armor panel and some of it is quite elaborate. So the quickest way to paint them is actually to approach painting that first and then to neaten up the flat panels, which are never as detailed as that trim is. So that's the way we're gonna be doing this miniature. So this means what we need to do is choose an undercoat that's going to be really good for that brass trim initially, but also help us when it comes to cleaning up the armor in the middle, which is going to be red. Now for that reason, I've chosen to use Mephiston Red Spray, which is a great starting point because this is the main red that their armor color is going to be. But you could also start with a gray undercoat if you wanted to and follow the exact same steps. It just means when it comes to neatening up that red, it will take just a little bit longer, but the choice is yours. But what we need to do is start out then with that brass trim and the color we're going to use here is some Rune Lore Brass. And the brush I'm gonna to use to apply it is a medium base brush that's seen a lot of work. So it's a very rough brush this, but you'll see why I'm going for this one in a moment. It's all about speed of application for a brush like this. It's a good size for it. It's quite easy to control and it means as well that we can use it just to thin the paint down with a little bit of water, just being careful not to overdo it to get it nicely thinned before we start applying it. So as I mentioned, we're starting out with that trim and you'll see why now, because if you take a look at it, it's very elaborate, especially around the leg just here. You can see all those little spikes we've got across the front there, then we've got the corn icon, there's more spikes around here. If you imagine we were carefully painting that and trying to avoid catching the red as we did so, it'd be a very long process. However, if I do it like this, where I'm just quickly painting it like that, you see I get everything brass that I need to be brass, then in the next stage, as we come back to it with the red, it's going to be much quicker as we just move in to neaten that up. So that's why we're doing it this way around. So at this stage, it's just a matter of going all the way around the miniature, looking for anything that you want to be brass and just blocking it in with this color, just making sure that it is this color and not worrying about anything else at this stage. Once you finish getting all of that brass on there, we're then ready to move on to neatening up that red. And before you start with that red, just make sure to clean your water because you're bound to have a lot of metal floating around in there at this stage if you've been painting a unit. So you don't want it to go and contaminate other colors. So once you have got clean water, you're then ready for the red of the armor. And for this, we're going on to Mephiston red. Now to apply it, what I have is a size one from Artis Opus, so a medium sized brush. If you want to go for a Citadel brush, I'd recommend something like a medium layer, something like that with a good tip on it because you need a bit of control here. But the idea with this is just to neaten up all of that armor. So we want to paint all of it, even the parts that were undercoated with Fist and Red that's still showing through. Bear in mind if you undercoat your model with a different color, the same stage will work just fine. It's just that with that red undercoat, it's gonna be a little bit faster, that's all. So with the paint prepared, we just need to start doing that. And you can see it's a matter of looking for the flat panels, such as this one just here on the leg and essentially coloring it in and going right up to that trim. And you can see it's nice and easy to do it this way, much easier than it would have been had we done it the other way around and we're neatly painting in the trim instead. Now that we've got the two main colors of the color scheme blocked in, what we can do is move on to base coating some smaller details. And we're gonna start out here by base coating in the leather. And for this, what I've chosen is a colder brown. In this case, I'm gonna be using some scorched earth. And to apply it, I'm sticking to my size one brush, which is a good size for the sort of details that we're doing here. But of course, feel free to go for a small one if you want to. But what we need to do is just make sure the paint's nicely thinned down and ready. And once you've got it prepared, it's just a matter of looking for all the leather details in the miniature. So we're looking at things like pouches, holsters, belts, that sort of thing. So for example, around here, we just wanna block this detail in completely at this stage. Once you base coat all that leather detail, the next thing we can do is pick out all the bone details on the miniature because of course it wouldn't be corn without skulls. So for this, what we need is a darker bone color. I'm gonna use some dragon fang for this, applied with my size one brush once again, though feel free to change one to whatever size you want because you could, if you wanted to, pick out some various horns and things that appear around the miniature in bone if you want. The choice really is yours, either this or silver is ideal for them. In my case, what I'm looking for is skulls. So we've got one just here and it's just a matter of blocking it in entirely. 
And with that bone detail now base coated, we've actually applied all the base coats that can all benefit from a brown wash. So that's why we did those in this order so that now we can wash all over the miniature in one go. So nice and efficient way of doing this. Great for painting a squad. Then we can move on to picking out some smaller details afterwards. So what we need now is a dark brown wash. I'm gonna use some battle mud wash for this and to apply it, you wanna go for a larger brush to paint it all over the miniature. So for that reason, I have a monster brush here from the army painter. What you need to do is load up a generous amount on the bristles and then it's just a matter of painting it across the entire miniature. And as I say, we want to have a a generous amount on the miniature to make sure it runs into all the nooks and crannies and things but at the same time we don't want to overdo it so at the moment you can see I've just applied it to one leg but there's a bit too much because it's going all lumpy around areas like that so what I'm going to do is just use my brush a bit like a sponge and just push it around and keep it moving until it goes to a little bit more of the sort of strength we're getting on the leg just now you see it's not pulling in any particular area it is staining all of it so we do need to neat that up later on but importantly it has settled in the recesses and given us that definition so i'm going to paint it all over the miniature and then give it plenty of time to dry it's going to take around about 45 minutes before we can move on to the next stage With that wash completely dry, you can see the miniature is now looking much clearer with all the detail and neater as well, but it has gone a bit murky in some areas and we are gonna come back to that to address it. But before we do so, what we need to do is apply a few more base coats that can take advantage of a black wash this time. And what we're looking at here is some black, which is actually gonna be an off black that we can shade down with that black wash. And then we want silver as well. So what I'm gonna use here is some Death Reaper followed by some Surcoat Silver. And we're gonna start out with that Death Reaper. I'm going for my size one brush again, but as usual, feel free to switch to a small one if you want to but with this we're now looking for all the black details in the miniature of which there are a fair few and they're all shapes and sizes now there's going to be fair black details on the weapons like a fair few of them so for example on the axe we've got just here we want to block in areas like this being really careful of that brass as we do so but also we need to keep an eye out for any pipes on the armor such as these ones on the front of the chest around here and we also want to get the joints as well so we're looking at ones such as on the backs of the legs so around here in addition if there's any fabric on the miniature be sure to get that too and there is in this case there's a loincloth around here so we want to paint this as well. And once you're happy with the black, we're then ready to move on to silver. So here I'm using some Surcoat Silver, and with this we're just looking to base coat all the silver details that are scattered around the miniature. And there we go, I've finished applying the silver details and you can see I've used it for things like the mouth grill, we've also got details on the weapons, there's chains, grenades, that sort of thing. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is apply that black wash. And we want to put it over the black details that we painted in and the silver ones at the same time. So for that reason, you wanna go for a smaller brush than the previous time we did a wash. So in that case, I'm using a size one brush and it's Oblivion Black Wash that I'm gonna be using for this. And as I say, we just wanna paint it onto those details. So definitely use a palette to control exactly how much is on your brush at once. And then all you gotta do is just carefully start applying it over these areas. So for example, if we take a look at the front of the body, you can see we've got these different pipes and things. What we want to do is just carefully introduce it over those areas and around them so it's touching that red armor but not going directly onto it. Same with the silver, where again we just want to paint it directly over these parts, making sure it settles in the recesses but doesn't go onto those surrounding colors. The black wash is dry and so all that black and silver detail is now nice and neat as well and so we can now finish that stage and move on to the next one which is going to be to clean things up a little bit because whilst we have got that definition it has gone a little bit murky so what we need to do is just bring back the brightness to some of the colours. Now we're going to be looking mainly at the most important ones in the colour scheme here and the first of those is going to be red so it's back to Mephiston red for this with a layering application now and this is where the beauty of having that red undercoat really is going to come in now. Not only did base coat in this colour earlier on when we were neatening it up it turned out to be really quick but it's going to be the same here as well. Now I'm going for a slightly smaller brush at this stage. I've gone down to a size zero here, but really you're just looking for a brush that holds a good point to it. And with it, we need to reapply this red onto the red armor panels, but this time looking to avoid the recesses where more shadow was settled or more wash has settled really. So for example, if we take a look at the front of the body just here, what we're aiming to do is to apply it into areas such as just here so that we look at the flat in the middle and don't go quite into the corners. So just there, this little raised up nodule that we've got just there and then going down here under the arm, but not going quite down to that black pipe beneath it. So basically there, just like that. Same as we get around to the head, you can see we've got these sort of crest designs on the helmet. What we want to do is apply it into the middle here because we've got that recess around the edges where it meets that brass. So it's a matter of going down there and then just down here in the same way. And then on the forehead, this red bit is the same as well. Let's paint it in the middle of these panels so that we get that stronger red in the middle whilst retaining the definition from the wash in the corners where it meets the brass.
Once that stage is done, you can see we've now returned that brighter red to the armor. And so now what we need to do is do it on the secondary color, which is that brass trim. So for this, we're gonna to return to some Rune Lord brass. Then after that, we're going to go back to the bone details, but this time with a slightly lighter color. So I'm gonna use some Skeleton Legion here. And it's gonna be the same process, so still layering the bone. I'm just gonna add a bit more volume to it, which for the skulls, which are quite important in core miniatures, of course, will work really nicely. But first of all, what we need is Rune Lord brass. And because the trim can get quite intricate, I've gone right down to a small brush now, I'm using a size double zero from our Opus. So if you want to go for Citadel, then a small layer is definitely what I recommend here because it just gives that a little bit more control as we're going around rivets and things like that. Like before, we just need to make sure the paint's nicely thinned and a little bit translucent on the palette. So just test it to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then what we need to do is reintroduce it over the brass parts on the armor. So for example, if we look on the helmet just here, what we want to do is avoid the recesses, but otherwise get the flat areas. So that means on these crests that we got on top of the helmet, it's going along here, just in between these rivets, just following them along there like that. And this way you can see we get that nice shine once again, but also retain the definition that we got from the wash. And with that, the shine is returned to the trim. And so now moving on to the bone. And for this, I'm using some Skeleton Legion and it's the same process once again. I'm still using the, the double zero brush, but again, what I want to do is just look for those raised up areas. So for example, around the face of the skull right there and any recesses we want to skip past. So that includes the eye holes. What's well, got the nose just there. And there's also that little ridge directly above the eyes where we then want to move on to the top of the skull just to round this part here. And with that skull neatened up, if you want to, you could pretty much leave the miniature there and just base it, paint in the eyes, which we're gonna do later on in this video and do the little bit of verdigris that appears on the World Eaters icon on the shoulder and your model will look great on the tabletop. But if you really want it to stand out, what you need to do is some highlights and that's what we're gonna go into doing just now. And this is something you might just wanna reserve for characters or the whole army, the choice really is yours. But if you wanna do it, what we need to do is concentrate on the two main colors first of all. So we'll start out with that brass, then after that, we're gonna move on to the red. Before the brass, the color we're going to use is some Canoptech Alloy. So basically a platinum sort of color is what we've got here. I'm definitely sticking to the really small brush. This is my size double zero once again. And with this, we want to accentuate that brass trim by essentially following along all the edges with an edge highlight to help it just really, really set off. Have a nice shine just on the corners, help it really pop from a distance. And so the key to doing that is to make sure the paint's thinned correctly. So just test on the palette, make sure it's flowing well from your brush. And this is feeling pretty good here. So I'm happy with that. Just bring the bristles to a nice point, And then we're looking for all the edges on that brass. Now, a lot of the time, because of the texture of it, you can actually approach with the side of the brush and skim along it. So for example, on the crest and the helmet, you can see it's very easy to approach there at about 45 degrees from the flat, follow it round and just change the angle as I need to so that I'm comfortable and always approach using that side. This way it's very easy to work my way around and get all that highlights all the way around. So sometimes it means turn the model practically upside down because it's nice and easy to do that. Now, as for the edges on the inside, it's a little bit trickier. In this case, what you'll need to do is use the tip of the brush. But again, it's a very sharp edge, so it is quite easy to catch it all the same. So just make sure you're nice and steady and really brace the miniature in your hands. And then using the tip of the brush, just follow that edge all the way around, changing angle as you need to so that you're comfortable. And this way you'll get the highlight in those parts. Now, finally, on all that trim, there are rivets all over it. So be sure to get those too. And with this, all you gotta do is just dot that little raised up texture just to pick it out. Once you've finished applying that lining all around the edges of that brass trim, you can see it just really helps it just stand out, makes it nice and sharp and finishes it off. And so now what we need to do is continue this on the other main color on the model, which of course is the red. And here what I'm gonna go for is some demon red. So a nice brighter red here. To apply it, I'm going for the same brush, still the size double zero, because the application is gonna be the same process here where we're looking for the sharp edges. I want to follow each one. Although now there's going to be less of them because of course we're no longer following around that trim. Instead, we're just looking for the edges of the red where there is no trim essentially, or any corners, things like like that. So for example, on our berserker just here, that would mean areas such as this knee right here. What we want to do is just look for the edge of it and follow it all the way around. And in this case, that means using the tip of the brush because this edge isn't standing out massively. So just want to carefully follow it. Remember when you're doing it like this, just make sure that you're comfortable holding the model. So this way you can minimize any shakes and you can be nice and accurate as you do that. But we're also looking for edges elsewhere on the body too. So there's gonna be some around the breastplate just here, such as the collar. And this is one where we can use the side of the brush, just very gently moving in just to skim along to get that nice highlight along that edge.
And with that, the red armor has been highlighted too. And if you wanted to, again, you could leave it here, but we're just gonna do a little bit more on that red armor, just to help it pop that bit more. And this is again, something that you might just wanna reserve for characters or do on all your troops. The choice is yours. It's another edge highlight, but a much quicker one this time. And what we need is a nice bright orange. Now I'm gonna use some orange flare for this and to apply it and stick into that really small brush because with it, we just want to retrace our steps on some of the edge highlights we just did on the red, but very selectively looking for sharper corners and points that stand out more. So for example, if we take a look at the Berserker, the sort of thing that we're looking at is going to be such as on his collar just here, where you can see there's a point right at the very end of it right there. What we want to do is just gently skim on that little bit just there to add a little bit of orange on that sharper point to help it stand out a bit more. So other areas we might want to do this on would be on these corners that we've got on the elbow plates. So we're looking at areas such as very lightly right there and right there, perhaps on the hands too, where we're looking at the fingers and thumbs, so areas like just there and these joints around here. So you can see it's very small select parts, but it just helps these details stand out that little bit more. And there we are, the red is now fully highlighted too. And once again, if you wanted to, you could just leave it here and it's gonna look fantastic when you get it on the tabletop. However, what we are gonna do is now highlight everything else in the miniature to complete it. And so for this, we'll start out with that black detail. Here we need a dark gray to highlight it. So I'm gonna use some dungeon stone gray and then we'll move on to the silver. We want a very bright, vibrant silver here. So I'm gonna use some mithril blade. With that done, it's time to move on to the leather. And for this, I'm gonna use some ancient forest. And then finally, to complete all those bone details, what we'll use is some vampire fangs or light bone color. But first of all, we need dungeon stone gray and it's back to that small brush again. So still the size double zero. And with this, we're looking to accentuate all those black details we got on the miniature by picking out the texture of them. Now, sometimes that means it's just gonna be another simple edge highlight like what we did before. So for example, on this bolt pistol just here, we're looking for the sharper edges and you can often approach the side of your brush, just gently skimming along to get a highlight on those features, just like we did on the armor. There are, however, lots of pipes and things, and some of these have texture on them, such as these ones going along here. In this case, what I recommend you do is just angle it so that you're painting downwards towards yourself and look for that texture and just simulate it with some lines of this color. So that means just working your way along like this to really bring out those ridges on that texture just there. And with the black finished, we're now ready to move on to the silver. And for this, I'm using some Mithril Blade. And this is once again gonna be an edge highlight on all these features, so very carefully applied onto areas like the muzzle of the gun right here. But also, if you want to, you can use it as a very fine highlight on the brass, just on sharpest corners, like we did with the orange earlier. If you want to do it, just focus on areas such as on the top of the crest around here. With that, the silver's complete, and so it's time to move on to the leather. And for this, I'm using some ancient forest. And when highlighting this one, whilst we're still looking for details that stand out, like edges and things, as you approach them, just do it a little bit roughly, because this way you just help create the appearance of a bit of texture on the leather. And then finally, we can move on to Vampire Fang, and this is just gonna be a highlight for the bone details. So in this case, we're looking at picking out the features of the skull. And with that, those details are now all highlighted. And so the Berserker is very nearly finished, but there are some things that we still need to do. And the first of those is gonna be the eye lenses. And then we've got a little bit to do on the Legion icon. But starting with those eye lenses, what we're gonna go for here is a glowing green effect. And to do it, we're gonna start out with the bright green. What I've got is some etheril green for this. And then we're gonna go over that with one of Citadel's contrast paints. And warp lightning is the one we're gonna use for this. And once that's dry, we'll then finish off with a white. And for this, we're gonna use some white star. But first of all, we're gonna use some etheril green and to apply it, I'm definitely sticking to the small brush for this. And with it, what we want to do is to pick out the, sort of the bulge of the lens really. It's quite rounded this one. So it's nice and easy to pick it out. You just need to make sure you don't have loads of this on your brush. Just make sure it is thin so it's flowing well. So you have that control so you can build it up. And then what we want to do is just hold the model really steadily and gently move in and just pick out that eye. And you can see it's standing out there in that recess that we got with the brass around it. So what we want to do is just make sure that we very carefully go in and just gently pick it out completely like this. Once you've got the first green on there, we can then move on to warp lightning. And I've thinned this with just a little bit of water. And the idea here is to paint it over that almost bulge we've got for the eye lens and let it settle in the surrounding area. So just very carefully apply it about this sort of strength here so that we get that darker green going around that bright green in the middle. And once that contrast paint is completely dry, you can then move on to a pure white. So here I'm using some white star, and with this, we just wanna very gently move in and paint a small line of this right in the middle of each eye lens.
And with that, we've now got those evil glowing green eyes on the miniature. And so we can now move on to the final detail, which is actually gonna be the World Eaters icons, the Legion badge that we've got right here, because these days these have a kind of verdigris pattern on them to give them some color on the world part inside the mouth. So that's what we're gonna do now. And to get this sort of color, what we want to do is take some normal acrylic paints, but dilute them using Lamia Medium to turn them into a wash almost, so that we can wash them over the brass and stain it and get that verdigris appearance. So what we want first of all for this is going to be some Lupercal Green and also some Lamia Medium. And we'll use this for the first color for this mix. What we want to do is just get a little bit of Lupercal Green and you don't need very much of this, so I'm still using my double zero brush for it. But then we want to heavily thin it down with the medium. So I want to get a really good brush full of it and really mix those together so we get that very diluted version of the color. So right down there like that. Once you've got that mixed up, all you need to do is load up some on your brush and then paint it directly over the world. So being careful of the teeth surrounding it, looking at going in the middle just here, we just want to run it over so it settles into the texture and stains it subtly with this green. Once that mix is completely dry, we can then push this a little bit further with a slightly brighter green. And for this, what we're gonna use is some Cabalite green, but again, dilute with Lamy Medium for the same sort of reason, in that we want it to kind of fade into the surrounding color and get a nice verdigris sort of appearance to it. So once again, we need to mix this on the palette using that really small brush once again. So still the size double zero, a little bit of Cabalite green. Then we just want a little bit of medium. And this time I'm looking to make the mix a bit stronger so that the color is gonna be a bit more intense as we put it on. So for something kind of like that. With that prepared then, you just need to get a very small amount of this and just start dotting it into some of the deeper recesses where that world meets the teeth. So we're looking at areas such as around here, just dotting it on there like that so you get that little speck of that brighter green color. Now, once this is done, your miniature is ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for. But in this case, I'm gonna go for a desert base to be a really nice contrast with this color scheme. And here we have the completed Corn Berserker ready to claim skulls in the name of his god. So when it comes to painting Corn Berserkers, there's a trick here that's actually applicable on loads of other Chaos Space Marines and indeed lots of Chaos Troops too. And that is it's often easier to paint the trim before you do the main color on the armor. And whilst this might seem a little bit counterintuitive at first, trust me, it's quicker doing it that way than it is the other way around. So have fun painting your Corn Berserkers and we'll see you again very soon.